Effects of changing dimensions proportionally. Our objectives are to describe the effect on perimeter and area when one or more dimensions of a figure are changed, as well as apply the relationship between perimeter and area in problem solving. Why learn this? You can analyze a graph to determine whether it is misleading or to explain why it is misleading. Let's start by looking at the effects of changing one dimension. Describe the effect of each change on the area of the given figure. Okay, so we're going to take the height of the parallelogram and we're going to double it. But let's first figure out what our original dimensions are. So we're going to have 12 times 9, which gives us 108. Let's fix that one so it actually looks like a 1 here. 108 meters squared. And now let's look at what happens when we double the height. Well, our height is 9, so to double that, we're at 18. So now we're going to have 12 times 18, which is 216 centimeters, or sorry, not centimeters, meters. We are in meters here. Meters squared. All right. So what exactly happened when you changed from 108 to 216? Well, if one dimension is doubled, the area will be simply doubled. So the area was doubled. All right, so now let's look at effects of changing dimensions proportionally. So you're not just going to change one dimension, you're going to change them proportionally. So describe the effect of each change on the perimeter or circumference and the area of the given figure. So the base and height of a rectangle with base 8 meters and height 3 meters are both multiplied by 5. So you're not just changing the one height or the one base. You're actually changing things proportionally here. All right, so let's start with perimeter. So our perimeter of our original is going to be 2 times 8 plus 2 times 3. There's two lengths, two widths, and that will give us 22 meters. And our original area is simply going to be 8 times 3, which is in fact 24 meters squared. All right, so now let's look at what happens when we multiply both by 5 which puts this at 40 and this one at 15. So our base becomes 40 and our height becomes 15. All right, so our perimeter is going to be 2 times 40 plus 2 times 15, which gives us 110 meters. And then our area is going to be simply 40 times 15, which is 600 meters squared. All right, well, with the perimeter, the perimeter has been multiplied by 5. Because if you take 110 divided by 5, you end up with 22. So our perimeter is multiplied by 5. The area is multiplied by a little bit more than 5. To be exact, 5 squared, or when you divide uh, 20, uh, sorry, 600 by 24, you end up with 25. So the area is multiplied by 25, or it might be easier to remember it as 5 squared. So if you're changing both dimensions, the perimeter is either multiplied or divided, depending on what you're doing, by whatever that number is. The area is multiplied or divided, once again, whatever you happen to be doing here, by that number squared. The reason I, this helps me remember it is that area is generally squared, whereas perimeter is not. Try this next one on your own.
All right, now that you've had a moment to try it on your own, let's try it together. So we want to start with our original, and we want to figure out all of its dimensions. So our circumference of our original figure is going to be 2 times pi times 9, which gives us 18 pi. And then our area is going to be pi times our radius squared, which gives us 81 pi, and circumference is in inches, and area is in inches squared. So that's our original. Now let's look at our new figure. So we're multiplying it by one third. You can think of it as multiplying by a third or dividing by three, your choice. Now we're dealing with the radius. Now, we are only changing one dimension, but if you're changing the radius, it's changing it evenly all the way around because the radius in a circle is the same no matter where you go. So by changing the one dimension in a circle, it's the same as changing things proportionally with two dimensions in like a rectangle, for example. So our new figure will be circumference is 2 times pi times 3 which is 6 pi inches. And then our area is going to be pi times 3 squared, which is 27 pi inches squared. Now, if you look at the circumference, the circumference was divided by 3. So your circumference was divided by 3. And then your area was divided by 9, or 3 squared. So once again, your perimeter circumference, if you're changing things proportionally, that will be changed by whatever you're doing it, dealing with it by. So you can either have it as multiplied by 1 third, or you can have it divided by 3, or you have the area is divided by 3 squared, when all the dimensions of a figure are changed proportionally, the figure, figure will be similar to the original figure. So change in dimensions, all dimensions multiplied by a, perimeter or circumference changes by a factor of a, and then your area changes by a factor of a squared. Let's get a little bit more challenging here. All right, so what are the effects of changing the area? So a square has a side length of five centimeters. If the area is tripled, and we're not talking about like a side length, a base, or a height, the area is tripled, what happens to the side length? Okay, so a square has a side length of five centimeters. So the area of your original is going to equal 5 squared, because it's a square, and that would be 25. Now, your area is tripled. So that means you're going to take your 25, and you're going to multiply that by 3, since it's tripled, and you'll get 75. And then it says, well, what's happening to the side length? Okay, so when you're dealing with a square, you have s squared equals the side side length, so if you get s by itself, so side length squared equals your area, so it's going to equal your 75. Okay, well, we want to figure out what one of them is, so we need to take the square root of both sides. So s equals the square root of 75, which when you put this in simplest radical form, you end up with 5 square roots of 3. So therefore, if your original one was at a side length of 5, your new figure, it's going to be being multiplied by the square root of 3. So your new side length, so the side length is multiplied by the square root of 3. Once again, because this 5 was your original side length, so you're multiplying that by the square root of 3 
to get your new area. Since your area was tripled, not your side length. It's almost like working backwards. Let's try another example to make sure you have this. A circle has a radius of 6 inches. If the area is doubled, what happens to the circumference? All right. So we have a circle has a radius of 6 inches. And we know that the area equals pi times our radius squared. So we have 36 pi. Now since the area is doubled, we are going to double the area. So our new figure will be 36 doubled, which would be 72 pi and inches squared here. So this is our new area, but we need to simplify it back to the radius because it's the only way we're going to be able to substitute it back into the circumference to figure out what's going on with that. All right, so we need to figure out our r for this. Now we have pi r squared equals 72 pi. So we're going to divide both sides by pi and then take the square root of both sides. So we have r equals 6 square roots of 2. So we need that piece of information. And now we can substitute that back in, or not back into, but into our formula for circumference. So circumference equals 2 times pi times our radius, which is 6 square roots of 2. And we'll have 2 pi times 6, which gives us 12 pi square roots of 2. So that would be that figure. But it wants to know what's happening to our circumference. So since we want to know what's happening, we want to know how it's changing. All we currently have is whatever our new circumference would be. So we need to know what our original circumference would be. So we'll do that in purple here. So our original circumference would be equal to 2 pi times our radius, which is 6, which is 12 pi. Well, what's changing? What are you multiplying this 12 pi by to get to 12 pi times the square root of 2? Well, the square root of 2. So, you are multiplying by the square root of 2. 